Tuesday, August 10th, 2010, here at the Board of Public Works, Edward R. Roybal Hearing Room. I thank the Honorable Councilman Jose Wiesau for joining me. We do anticipate Councilman Robert Kukorian any minute now. Um, it has, what, four committees in one day, something like that? It's about four committees, that's three? Three, Five, six? Jobs. Okay. He has a lot. <laughs> a lot of committees. Uh, welcome, folks. And um, I never want to say it's a short agenda because then we jinx it and we stay here two hours longer than we anticipated. But we do have some um, reappointments today. And I want to thank them for joining us. And let's start with the first one. And uh, Roberto, a little background on the uh, Sure, council members. Item one is uh, the recommendation of the mayor relative to the reappointment of Mr. Victor Sampson to the North Valley APC. It's a reappointment. Come on yes. up, Mr. Sampson. As you walk up, I want to thank you for your contribution to the city, your thank stewardship you. in the uh, North Valley Area Planning Commission. So this is a reappointment. Yes, sir. So you're coming back for more. Pardon me? You're coming back for more. Uh, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> if there was one thing you wanted to share with us that you've learned, that you like to change or make better, is there anything that pops out in your mind? Okay. I, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. If there is anything that pops out in your mind that you would want to change or make better, given your two years as a commissioner, well, I, 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 I'm not sure I understand the question. The question is, what would I do to make things better for the city of Los Angeles? Right. Well, I think in, in land use, you're always looking for um, what I call good planning. And what I mean by that is that uh, there's a certain amount of planning that is going to take place. It's inevitable. And so what you want to try to do is to use your experience and skills and talents to try to select those projects that will enhance of the city of Los Angeles for the citizens of the city of Los Angeles. And, and so you, you evaluate all the facts very carefully. Uh, I am in the real estate business. I've been in it for over 30 years with Coral Banker. And so I have a fairly in-depth knowledge of, uh, of real estate. I am also part of the Urban Land Institute. So uh, I, I weigh every fact very carefully in making whatever decision I make in, in making my vote. But how many cases do you review in your commission? How many cases do I review? Uh, in each well, I mean, commission I mean, meeting. In each meeting? Yeah. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the North Valley, we probably have typically between two to five cases in an evening. Great. And, and I will review each of those cases prior to attending the meeting uh, and actually visit the site as well. So you're ready for another round? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, Mr. Sands, I want to thank you, and I want to ask my colleague, Councilman Rizal, if you have any questions or any comments? Thank you for your service. It's my pleasure. It's a pleasure to serve the, serve the city of Los Angeles. I will move that we recommend you, Mr. Sampson, and we'll uh, thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. That will be the action of this committee. And item number two, Roberto? Uh, item two, Council Members, is a communication from the mayor relative to the reappointment of Mr. Gordon Murley to the South Valley APC. Good day, Mr. Murray. Come on up. Now, this is the South Valley area as opposed to the North Valley area. Yes. We're south of Roscoe, and he was north of Roscoe. So how many years have you been commissioner now? I guess it's five years. Five years? And you're ready for another round? As ready as I can be. <laughs> uh, okay. it's, you know, it was really a very busy first session, but... With the slowdown in planning, it makes it a little easier than having seven to eight cases in an evening, which are very complicated. So we now don't get out at 11. We seem to get around 8 o'clock. But the commission is a very good group of people to work with. Great. In these five years, uh, if there was something you could change or want to change in this next go-around, what would that be, if anything? I think uh, the biggest problem in the city are the cell towers and more information be given to the commissions because sometimes it's a complete vacuum. We don't know how many other towers are around. We don't always know whether the co-location was something that was really pushed or whether the vendor really didn't want it. 
and in some cases, why isn't, can't we have co-location on other buildings, but we don't have the information, and it's a little difficult to really push a vendor to go where we think would be better from the public standpoint and the aesthetic standpoint to put it an installation. Well, I would welcome if perhaps you have, at your convenience, if you'd like to schedule a meeting, we can talk about that policy matter. Maybe there's an approach we could take given your experience. We, we would be happy to. Uh, we're available whenever you would like to sit down and, and okay. discuss. I'll have my office contact you. Issue. Because the other thing, I guess, in the city is the streamlining and the 12-2 and trying to get it so it becomes equitable for both sides and not to be heavily weighted to one side, which makes it very difficult if you don't feel that you can get something done in an expeditious manner, that it's really just going through and somebody else sets the timeline and you can't see the realization of why it's all of a sudden so long when there's only these two things to do. Right. So that's probably one of the biggest complaints we get from both sides. It took so long to get here. Right. Well, I look forward to meeting with you. I'll have my staff follow up and discuss what you were speaking to when it comes to the cell towers and other issues. But we'll make sure we follow up with you. Well, we're available whenever you would like to talk with us. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Thank you. And I would recommend, any questions, Mr. Murray? No. So we'd like to recommend Mr. Murray. And yes. And that will yes. be the action of this committee. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So, right. So we'll be calling specials three, four, and five for questions. And six, seven, and eight. And six will continue in Plum to September 14th. And council September 22nd. And seven will continue in Plum September 28th. And in council, hopefully October 8th. And uh, our director is not here today. And so that takes us back to uh, number three, Robert. Mm -hmm. uh, item three, council members, is a motion Wes and Smith. It's requesting planning with the assistance of the city attorney to prepare an ICO uh, to prohibit the issuance of demolition and any other building permits in the Jefferson Park neighborhood in CD10. And there's two corrections to the motion, councilman. Okay. Um, one has to, has to do with paragraph six. Uh, we've been advised by city attorney to read into the record that um, to include in accordance with California Government Code 65858, uh, paragraph six of the motion, and in paragraph seven of the motion to indicate that the uh, request for the ICO is that it be prepared by September the 7th. Okay. Um, well, let's have the staff come on up. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Council Member. My name is Faisal Roble, and I'm with the Planning Department. Give us a quick summary. Excuse me? A quick summary of... Well, before. this is uh, a case that has been with us, with the Planning Department, for a number of years. I would say about seven years. Uh, when the first initial motion was introduced by CD10, uh, issues of staffing did not really bode well for this project at that time. And the citizens in the area got together, uh, assembled their p p private efforts, and came to the department with a proposal suggesting to us that they could do the groundwork in terms of surveying and all other necessary items that are involved in, in, in the work. Another motion was reintroduced in 2009 and planning department somehow found some money uh, and also helped with the survey and the concept and that aspect of the work has been done. We are here now uh, with a motion that's instructing the planning department to expedite this process and bring in front of you uh, an ICO so that the uh, preservation effort would go forth. And that's why we are here today. Okay. Well, if there are no questions from my colleagues, from Mr. Faisal, we can have public comment, and I'll call you back after. Okay. 
Thank you. Seeing no questions, um, I'd like to call up Marina Mose, then John H. Arnold. Come on up, Ms. Mose. Marina Mose, come on up. John H. Arnold, then Norman Gilmore. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Give us your uh, name and address, please. Sure. My name is Marina Maves, and I live in Jefferson Park at 2221 West 30th Street. I have been resident there for five years. Um, I am here to support the interim uh, control ordinance for Jefferson Park. Jefferson Park is a historical jewel, a block after block of arts and crafts bungalows, an astonishing variety of architecture, almost intact, a piece of early LA history that we do not want to lose. In the last five years, um, in the last few years, five houses Not on my indeed. street, that's just three blocks, have been altered beyond repair. Those are lost pieces of LA history. Uh, in the last year alone, five houses in a few block radius have been altered beyond repair. These structures that were once contributing to the HPOZ are now no longer contributing. We are losing the fabric of our community. We are losing the structures we need for our historical protection ordinance, overlay zoning. We need the ICO to protect our community. This, we have a saying in our community that we lose a house a month. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I have pictures here of before and after of some of the houses in the area. May I Please, I'd like those? to see them submitted from the clerk. The clerk will pass them out. Ms. Mays, as, as, Mays, as you, as you um, leave, I have one question for you. And if you don't mind coming to the microphone. Um, when they're altered, are they altered because of weathering type of improvements or no. because they're being subdivided? No, they're altered in the sense that the, they're gutted. They, the whole exterior is taken off, all the siding, the windows, so it's just down to the studs. And then uh, this sort of aluminum kind windows are put on and the houses are stuck out. So the original character of the house is irretrievably lost. Okay. Well, thank you, ma'am. Next speaker, please. My name, is John, my name is John Arnold. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, by the way. Uh, I live at 2166 West 30th Street in Jefferson Park. I've lived there for nine and a half happy years. Love my neighborhood. Uh, I've been part of this process since 2002 when we brought the original motion to Councilman Holden, uh, who was uh, supportive, and we brought the motion for the H to start the HPOZ process then, and it was approved. Um, since then, we've gone through contortions of council member changes and planning department running out of money and everything else, and the HPOZ has been delayed and delayed, and as Marina said before me, we lose about a house a month. Um, and I'm here in support of the uh, ICO, and uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you for taking the time. Our next speaker. Give us your name and address. Good afternoon. My name is Norman Gilmore. I reside at 3652 3rd Avenue, and I'm a resident of Jefferson Park uh, since 2003. And, uh, you know, my, my, uh, um, my neighbors have discussed uh, briefly that we are experiencing substantial change. Um, we, you know, the, there was a, the original motion was 2002. The direction for the planning department was 2006. Looking forward, we really want to emphasize that we understand that the city is resource constrained right now, but Jefferson Park is ready to step forward and assist the planning department in anything they need to prepare. We know that perhaps a staff report is necessary. We know that elements of the staff report can be pulled from other related systems. We're also from related HPOZ um, analysis. And also, um, we know we are developing a plan as far as uh, how the HPOZ board is going to be set up. We have people in our community that are very active in 
working with the planning commission, uh, the, excuse me, the um, planning department, and advising them ideas about how to most effectively integrate the neighbors and the HPOZ boards into the process and to minimize the amount of labor required by the planning department. So we really ask you to encourage the planning department to work with us to expedite this. We're really watching this issue now. It's something that's very important to the community. We maybe were, you know, let it fell asleep and, and sort of woke up and said, wait, where's our ICO? And now we really want to move forward on the ICO and help out as much as we can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gilmore. Laura Myers. Oops. Hi, I'm Laura Myers. Um, my address is 1818 South Gramercy Place. Um, I am the planning and zoning chairperson for United Neighborhoods Neighborhood Council. So again, I want to emphasize, in May 2006, um, Herb Wesson actually did the second motion, but this one was also for ICO. You guys um, must have approved it in June to and instructed the planning department to take 90 days to come back. And it's been 17 90-day periods. Um, we actually, our stakeholders, had to go the route of a public records request, Freedom of Information Act request, just to extricate the draft ICO that had been prepared in that era so we could bring this forward. It's, we want it expedited at this point. Um, the city has funded, and it is completed but in draft form, the um, HPSA survey. The context statement was written in the 2005-2006 period. So to do a staff report with our help, what we would need from you, I think, is an instruction to the planning department to make a copy of the draft HPOZ and its context statement so we can actually see it. They've been keeping it rather secret from us. And there's also monies available in the community, if necessary, to have the second review of that HPOZ survey. In the meantime, without this ICO, we spent taxpayer money and are losing things that have been surveyed. So we would like this done as expeditiously as possible, but we are all willing to step in and do it. I wanted to mention one other thing in the 20 seconds. There is an existing HPOZ board that is agendaing this item to their meeting this month that is willing to adopt whatever that may mean because the new way of, the new wave on HPOZs is the new HPOZs need to be merged with or adopted by existing HPOZs because there's no staff but we have one that's willing two of its members own property in Jefferson Park. Thank you, Ms. So Myers. we're working on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lewis South. Uh, good afternoon. Um, as a resident of Jefferson Park and um, the editor and writer of the paper, the local, uh, our local neighborhood newspaper called Village Drummer, um, for years we've been supporting this. Uh, uh, this is the first time I've been to just mention, mention to the city council in an official capacity. Um, and I'm sorry about that if it was done before and I wasn't here. Uh, now we have the communication line, so I, I, will, I will attend as often as possible to, to emphasize the need for this kind of thing. Um, the community is one in which we are working class people of, of uh, uh, just a wide variety of backgrounds. Um, it's very representative of Los Angeles. Every kind of person you can imagine in Los Angeles is in Jefferson Park. And it's everybody who comes in there says all the time, is it always this quiet over here? And that happens not because we have uh, people walking around with guns forcing people to reconsider wrong action. It's the communication in a community that makes the difference, the distinguishing line between a bad or a good community. We communicate, all right? And so uh, what we're communicating to you, take this as a few people you see here today, it really represents the vast majority of people in the community to uh, have this kind of thing happen because, of course, it has everything to do with home values. It has everything to do with lifestyle in being the best it can be. And so uh, take, it, take it for what it is as we're talking to you that people of all kinds of backgrounds, all kinds of different ethnicities in representing Jefferson Park, the voice coming out of it, HPOZ, please, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Barbara Flemings. 
I believe that will be the last speaker before we ask the council office to come on up. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. And my name is Barbara Flemings. I'm at 2158 West 26th um, Place. And I'm a new resident there as well. And very active in the community with the children aspect. So um, the, any development made in that area would really be appreciated as far as children and young adults so that their options aren't as vast as they are at the present. But thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cummings. And uh, our last speaker from the council office, Elizabeth Carlin. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, council members. Elizabeth Carlin from council member Weston's office. Um, I would just like to ask that the public, public record reflect uh, what was stated pre prior to this discussion that paragraph six reflect government code 65858 and that paragraph seven uh, we would be open to the September 12th deadline uh, report back is that, as was stated before. Right. What you asking for? Okay. So the report back on this motion by September 12th. Yes. Okay, and I'll have the staff come up and respond to that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Faisal, Robles. Faisal Robles, planning department for the record. Now, there's a specific request as far as the uh, time period involved here. Can you respond to it, please? Well, yesterday I communicated with the council office and talked with uh, the deputy some of the issues that are which, involved. Which deputy? Uh, Sylvia Lacey of CD10, uh, who is pioneering this particular issue. And we understood that it would be uh, possible and uh, attainable on both sides to bring it, this issue to commission in 90 days because we have to do staff report, uh, we have to mail uh, notification to the public, uh, and uh, f from where I stand, I think 90 days is, is a more attainable goal than uh, September 16th or 9th, which is about, uh, I would say, 20 days. Now, let me ask the council office, are you speaking to a report to the commission? Well, if, if the motion is referred to planning department, then we will go out and do the ICO, go to commission before we come back to you. That's okay. I apologize. I'm not sure what body my coworker was referring to. Okay. Uh, no. But not, we're agreeable to 90 days, to whatever the process is. Okay. So, uh, Ms. Robles, when we talk about uh, you're having some incredible support for this, you're listening to the council office pushing for this. When the community folks want to participate and, and help you with the process, uh, is there a way to accommodate that or is there a dialogue with the local community leaders to work with them to see how this can be facilitated? Is that dialogue in existence now? I think the, the, there is an opportunity to invoke that kind of dialogue and I'm open and I wouldn't mind to uh, have a you know, sidebar with some of the community members. But given the the starving level of my section and the fact that we have several competing uh, issues. I think a 90-day uh, uh, commitment isn't that bad, provided that we stick with our commitment. And I would underline that sticking with our commitment because we, in the plan department, as you are aware of, we are so many competing issues and interests. But I do recognize, as I started in my opening remarks, that this is a project that has been with the department for a number of years and I had as a junior staff met some of the folks here about seven, eight years ago. So I do uh, have that empathy towards them. There have been priorities shifting in the plan department for many years. I think the current administration is willing to go at length even using some of the community's resources and expertise to expedite. But in order to protect my word, I think a 90-day commitment is viable on my side. Well, let's do this. 
I will respect the 90 days, but you can give us a 30-day report on your progress towards those 90 days. Okay. So that way we can see the movement as we get closer to the deadline. They've been waiting seven years. This is not in any way a reflection on you personally. It's not about that. Yeah. But it is about understanding this notion of of priority, I guess, and, and that'll be a discussion we'll have with the department um, the director in terms of how we're going to weigh these competing interests, as you've uh, stated. Yes, I think most of the work, as Laura Mayer has probably touched, we, we did most of the work. I am not really privy as to why uh, management at that time stopped the work, but you know, a significant amount of the work has been completed and for the, in terms of the survey and the concept, I don't understand why the community cannot have access to it. It's a public record. Anything that goes into the case file of any project should be something that we have to share with the public, and I will print that. I'm not aware of who said does, that. Does Ms. Myers have your phone number? She does. And has she called you for that information? I can walk her upstairs now and print if I go So to you don't have to do the, the whole public act thing. You don't, it's not necessary. Uh, they're, they're here to help you, so I want to make sure we all sing Kumbaya at the end of this meeting. Yep. Uh, but uh, I think you're hearing goodwill and in the spirit of cooperation from the staff. You know, it's now a matter of producing and putting actions behind words, and the results will dictate that. Thank you. Um, one last question. I'll ask my colleagues if you have any observations or questions. But in the South LA Community Plan update, how do, would this motion fit within that realm of work, or does it? Well, indeed, that's one of the issues why I said I shouldn't commit uh, to, to a 30-day simply because for each South and Southeast Los Angeles, with each community plan encompassing a minimum of 300,000 residents and probably the largest land use uh, exercise, if you will, uh, since uh, the program of community plan update started, we have 0.75 staffing for each community plan. I mean, talk about resource poor area that South and Southeast LA. In terms of how this ICO effort would interface uh, with the community plan update, I think they would go parallel. I would assign somebody else other than the two planners who are right. currently working. And that's where I should do the scrapping, who, where I can find. In terms of the timeline of the South and Southeast community plan updates, we are committing to bring in the effort to commission uh, sometime June 2011. Mr. Robles, there's no question that the planning department lost 40% of its staff. That everyone knows. But in the past three or four years, we had staffing levels to meet the challenge and, and we still waited six, seven years. So for me, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, we need to now figure out how to get it done. Yeah. This should have been done five years ago, but that's the past, let's look forward and let's move in a direction that makes it happen. And that's what I'd like to see in 30 days, how far we've gotten and how much will get done in those last 60 days and then I have another report on the 60-day point, and hopefully in 90 days we'll get some more results. I think we can and, do that. And that'll be something we'll work on together. Colleagues, any questions or, or observations? Um, well, first let me say I, I fully support this. I, I think the city of Los Angeles is losing too much of its history, and when somebody mentioned stucco, you know, that really raised my eyebrows. I think we're stucco in too many of our homes, and we're losing a lot of the character we once had. Um, but um, in my district, the Garvanza HPOZ had a similar story as I'm listening to what's going on here. It was approved a while back, and uh, the residents were now wondering where it was. Uh, we, we moved it forward, but then it got stalled because of uh, personnel cutbacks within the planning department. And what we did recently was combine the Garvanza HPOZ with a neighboring HPOZ, Mr. Um, Reyes' district, the Highland Park HPOZ to uh, get economies of scale in resources, limited resources that we have to move it forward. I, I'm just, um, uh, I just want to support the planning department. I think your intentions are good, but we should be realistic that I mean, you guys are very limited. 
whatever timelines are coming up today, I want to make sure they're realistic because what, what can happen has happened in our case is that we had very high expectations about when this was going to be completed, then we had to slow down quite a bit. So I would just ask that you, we all approach this with caution, be very realistic about the timelines before us, uh, and, uh, and make sure that it uh, continues to move forward. So that's all I, I suggest from my experience on that. But I, will do th I do want to thank the plan department for the work you've been doing at Garvanza HPLC. We've moved that along, and it's, uh, it's a lot of work, but it's very well worth it at the end. Thank you. And that was an, uh, a good example with the combination of uh, Highland Park, Garvanza. Probably we did that effort in 45 days so that we save time and not have uh, uh, ordinance that expired and not having a tool in place. So. All right. Well, thank you. Any, any, no? Okay. Thank, well, thank you. you, sir. Thank you. And uh, as amended, uh, we'll move this, but with a caveat of 90 days as opposed to the September, I forget what date that was. So we'll move to 90 days with a 30-day report. So, so in a month you'll get an update. Update in a month with the goal of meeting the uh, commitments by 90 days. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, Roberto. And you'll adopt the motion. Adopt the motion. Yes. Uh, item four, council members, is a, an August 4th, 2010 plan dependent report. It's seeking council authority to submit the Prop 84 Sustainable Communities Planning Grant uh, the application itself to the Strategic Growth Council in the state of California. Do you have staff on this issue? Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, <laughs> council members. It's si I'm Simon Pastusha with the City Planning Department. And before you is this request um, to submit for a, we're asking for a million dollar grant um, from the state. This is a, a a source that became available on July 4th, the state notified that the funds might be available. Um, we are looking at doing a sustainable communities action plan with also implementation program. And so the, before you use the request that we can submit the grant, this is a requirement for submitting the grant to the state. And just in the timeline for this, um, real quickly, is the if the state is able to go for the bonds, the bonds get sold, they will be awarding these grants hopefully in the autumn of this year and then possibly funding it with, with the contracts by the, um, by the end of the year, beginning of next year. But we are going, part of this report is that we report back to you if we get any money. Um, but let me walk you through the components of the grant itself, which is one is the Sustainable Communities Action Plan, which is organizing all of our existing sort of policies in the city that are sort of dispersed through our general plan and also working with um, all the major departments, which is Public Works, Transportation, um, Department of Water and Power, CRA, and Planning, and to look at their sustainable policies. And then there'll be some implementation programs in this. And those are the key components. One is for some multifamily um, design guidelines and streamlining the code so that mixed-use development, which is very complicated in our code, would be an easier thing to develop. Um, the second thing would be we are asking for a series of transportation improvements which include revising our TDM program within our zoning code and updating it because the Department of Transportation has done that. And TDM um, is? Transportation Demand Management. Right, just which for is the hearing public? Yeah, looking at a series of programs to help you reduce vehicle trips on a development project. Thank you. Other than provide parking or left hand, left turn, you know, expanding our, transport, our individual automobile capacity on the roadway. Thank so you, this sir. is looking at walkable routes, bike routes, transit, transit passes, those sort of things. Another component is looking at easing um, the department's role so that necessarily when we have a, a street widening, we don't necessarily have to do um, the improvement. So therefore, we can keep the sidewalk wide and not necessarily widen the street. So giving us some flexibility and also the flexibility in our street designations. Another component is for um, the open space and recreation. Um, we're looking at revising our Quimby ordinance, which currently is a little inflexible where you can spend the money and how you can spend the money. And the second part of this, which is a, um, a quarter of our grant, is for Parks and Recreation Department to um, start a study to look at facilities in the city and the ability to um, their access to transportation, uh, pedestrian connections, 
trail connections and to look at possible joint use facilities. And the last component of this is, um, is to update our California environmental quality thresholds, which because the state is coming up with some new thresholds for how we might measure um, transportation impacts, also how we look at greenhouse gas reductions to look at our current city thresholds and to provide some funding for that. And that's a quick summary of what we're going to be asking for. Great. And, and Carlos, today's action is really about authorizing the department to apply for the money. But there's something I'd like to highlight that uh, I'm hoping we'll make sure the scope addresses if we are awarded the grant. And this is one of the uh, goals. And this could be applied citywide, but I'm using this experience because I'm most familiar with it in my district. And I share this with a council where we are, how it affects the Royal Cycle. But, and this is an example, uh, Councilman Krakorian, where a portion of this money could go towards master planning at recreation and parks. Uh, the needs assessment already completed by the department highlighted the huge need for trails and connectivity between open spaces. I believe this trail and greenway planning can better contribute to the goals of AB 32, which is the state's climate change legislation. If some of the trails are multimodal, to include bicycles or, or appropriate, as an example, along the Royal Sacred Tributary, the Pasadena Parkway, uh, one of the first freeways built in the country, it's since been working, we've been working to develop a greenway that accommodates both pedestrians and bicycles, where you won't have to clash into an automobile. Uh, currently, the bikeway planning is a DOT function, Department of Transportation, which doesn't necessarily allow for the integrated design needed for something that I would like to envision as a linear parkway or greenway since right now it's all cement. I would like to see vacant parts with the help of other departments such as DOT and planning recommend criteria that could be used to determine where multi-use trails are appropriate. The Royal Sec would be a good case study since we already have funding to complete a portion of this path. We've been grappling with the design issues for quite some time and have some lessons learned as well as some unresolved questions. So the role of Caltrans how they affect us, the role of the county uh, and the Army Corps all enter into the discussion. I know there's a, some of these pathways and bikeways potential up in the valley. Uh, we've seen uh, several and several Congress members have made it a point to make me aware of that because they want to see that type of funding. Um, so I look forward to hopefully getting to that next level of coordination when we try to do something as basic as a, a greenway, a parkway that connects our parks but I'd also make it multimodal. And, uh, and I'm sharing this with you and, and making it on the public record so that we can see potential of how we can bring together these resources. So this is really an authorization action on our part for them to apply for the money. But it leads to all this other potential. Any questions or observations my colleagues? This is four and five together? Um, or just four? This is four? We're doing just four right now. Yeah. Any other comments on four? So I would uh, authorize the planning department to submit the Proposition 84 Sustainable Planning Grant and Incentives Program application to the Strategic Growth Council of California and uh, with the appropriate observations already made in this committee as an example of how we can implement. Definitely we'll uh, keep them yes and them into the plan. So that will be the action of this committee? I see, uh, I, I see and hear yes. So, okay. Our Thank next item. Much. Thank you, sir. And also, in addition, it was a request uh, to ask the planning department to report back to the council should the grant be awarded. Yes. Yeah. Uh, item five, councilman, is uh, an August 4th uh, planning department report, and it's seeking a grant council authority to submit a joint grant application along with the MTA, uh, and the application will be submitted to HUD. And this is for the fiscal year 2010 Sustainable Communities Regional Planning Grant. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. My name is Naomi Guth with the Department of City Planning. The item before you is to participate in a regional consortium to submit an application to HUD for a first time ever um, funding available for an integrated approach to planning, uh, transportation, and housing issues. Uh, we um, are proposing that 
the city partner with Metro as the lead, and other participants in the consortium are SCAG and all of the sub-regional ca COGS, councils of governments within the county of Los Angeles. So the project is a plan for the county. Up to five transit corridors would be selected, and along each of these corridors would be focused and integrated planning to address land use issues, affordable housing, uh, economic development, jobs, open space needs, a, a variety of community needs. Um, what is required for the application is that a partnership agreement be executed as proof that the consortium is real and that all parties to the consortium are committed to the project identified in the application. The application also requires um, a commitment of leveraged resources. Um, up to 20%, a minimum of 20% of the grant request. This consortium is requesting the maximum amount, which is $5 million, and each member of the consortium will commit um, some uh, leverage resources, which is staff time or other kinds of in-kind services. So before you is a draft partnership agreement and a draft letter to commit leverage resources from the Department of City Planning. These are still under review by the city attorney, and we anticipate that a full review will be complete, um, and if there are any changes, they would be presented um, prior to the full city council action on this item. Some of our political realities are that as soon as the state budget is agreed upon and passed, then this begins to turn on the green lights, correct? Actually, this is funding through HUD. Oh, HUD, okay. So it was item number four. Oh, it's four, okay. That is state money, and it's based on the issuance of bonds. So okay. the funds available for the state grant are tied to first the state adopting its budget and it then having the ability to issue bonds. This funding actually, it's my understanding, is has been appropriated um, and th this can move forward. Um, it's our understanding that HUD wants to make their funding decisions by the end of this calendar year and we would then enter into a process of negotiating an, an agreement with HUD in the beginning of um, 2011 and would hopefully have a project rolling within six months of the start of that year. Okay, great. Um, no public comment cards on this. Any comments from my colleagues? Please, sir. Well, I, I note that the um, first phase of the planning uh, process uh, has already anticipated that there would be the five um, uh, five areas that would, would be focused upon the five major subregions. Um, how were those five subregions decided upon? Uh, Metro actually took the lead on trying on pulling together this consortium and they talked with representatives from each of the sub-regional COGS within the county and there were several that opted not to participate in the consortium this year. Uh, so the ones that are included here are the ones that said we want to participate, we hope we'll have a corridor that we can work on. And okay. we're hoping as a consortium that this is a model that gets funded this year and that works and maybe we'll even apply next year and be able to add in the, those other um, sub-regional COGS to participate going forward. Yeah, and, and I think it's important to move forward on this because anytime we have an opportunity to receive federal funding that will help us with integrated planning, it's a very good thing, no matter uh, you know where we're targeting. Um, but at the time that this consortium was put together, the San Fernando Valley Council of Governments didn't yet exist. Uh, it was just formed within the last few months after about uh, a decade or so of trying to form one. So um, uh, my concern would only be that I want to make sure that the San Fernando Valley has a full opportunity to participate in this and that uh, by our moving forward in this it wouldn't preclude uh, the uh, San Fernando Valley COG from joining as a partner in this uh, and um, if not in phase one, certainly uh, in a phase two or, or uh, some uh, other opportunity to fully participate in this as well. Um, in the planning department, we actually grappled with that question, and I, I spoke with staff in the CLA's office. And as we were pulling together the consortium, that new, that new sub-regional entity was just having its very first meeting. And so 
it was it's difficult to include them at this point. Um, the San Fernando Valley very much is a part of our thinking, though, about what corridors can be included. If we are awarded funds, there, um, the partnership, the the consortium has to. Um, create and sign off on a final consortium agreement. It's an explicit requirement in the notice of funding availability. And at that time, there's an opportunity to add additional members to the consortium. If, if at that stage, um, the San Fernando Valley COG is not ready, the first steps of our project are to look at what additional stakeholders need to be brought in. And so maybe a couple months later, we'd be able to bring them in. So there, there are different stages here at which we anticipate bringing in that new COG. Great. Well, I'd, I'd like to ask that as soon as possible you invite the San Fernando Valley COG to agendize this for consideration um, so that they can uh, make a determination of whether or not at some future point it would be appropriate to join in as a partner. I'm sure there would be a way to make that happen without delaying this process today. Yes, certainly. Councilman, Comments, yes. If we should get this grant, when do we hear from you again? Or what's the interaction between the council, maybe through this committee, or uh, and the consortium? Um, oh, as um, identified here, prior to accepting any funds, we would return to the city council. Um, Metro is the lead for communicating with HUD and for executing the, uh, preparing and executing a cooperative agreement regarding the funding. Um, the logistical and administrative details, we still have to actually. So in, other, in other words, if we as a council come up to our priorities, how do we then agree with Metro that oh. these are the quarters that if the, this is how we want to execute whatever funds we got or implement the funds that we got. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I misunderstood your yeah. question. Um, the process that we foresee going through is that once funded um, and entering into an agreement with HUD and f drafting and signing off on a final consortium agreement, the very first step will be to identify corridors. So each subregion will begin to pull together its stakeholders and propose corridors which, uh, along which they would like to see additional study and um, be a, a, a project, one of the five. Those will then be brought forward to um, an entity that's being um, identified as the leadership forum. And it is actually part of the broader uh, metro board. Um, and that leadership forum will be the the time and place where decisions will be made about which corridors become part of the project. Metro, the Metro Board, this is, we try to describe it in the draft partnership agreement here. The Metro Board created an ad hoc committee on sustainability. That ad hoc, which is made up of Metro Board members, that committee then established a working group. So this doesn't come back to council at all? It goes, the subregions decide what corridors and then that goes to the Metro Board? That's correct. Currently, Los Angeles City is its own subregion. So we would have a process with the council for proposing. So that's our process. Yeah. yeah. And from there, then, it would go up through the pro this process with the leadership forum, yeah. as will all the other subregions. And how do you, how, what would be our process to decide what corridors get selected? We need to determine that. Okay. Sounds like a lot of fun in front of us. Um, well, given all this information, we would be authorizing the planning department to partner with the Los Angeles County Metropolitan Authority to submit the Department of Housing and Urban Development a fiscal year 2010 Sustainable Communities Regional Planning Grant Program application to HUD, Office of Sustainable Housing and Community. So that would be one action. Well, the next would be to direct the planning department to report back to council upon award notification and prior to ex the acceptance of any grant funds or the execution of the grant contract. And that would be uh, a recommended action from this committee. We have a second on that. Also, Councilman, uh, uh, Councilman Kekoyan's instruction to invite the San Fernando Valley COG as soon as possible. Absolutely. 
Yeah. That, was, that would be a third part of our action. Uh, so that's a second, and that's a big yes. yes. And um, we'll move forward with that directive. And uh, congratulations getting this far. And the real fun begins. Thank you. Thank you very much. Roberto, anything else? Uh, public comment, Council. Okay, public comments. We have with us Phyllis Doherty. Welcome, ma'am. Come on up. Good afternoon. Thank you. Hard to you really ever see me here. Uh, Phyllis Doherty, if you want my addresses, I'm in uh, Echo Park at 420 North Bonnie Bray Street and in Highland Park at 4260 Via Arbolata. Uh, they're equal addresses for me. I'm a member of the Sherman Oaks Homeowners Association, so I have interest with all of you. I'm here because of the proposed animal increase, which would bring the number of dogs and cats per uh, property, actually it's per resident, which could, mean, it could be unlimited, up to 10 per property. This was brought in by Coretz and Rosendahl. And this should have been sent to the planning committee. This is a zoning issue also. That's where it's the, the number of animals contained. It was completely bypassed as far as zoning um, or planning and went to the C CLA, CAO, and animal services. And of course there are a number of concerns as far as I, I own uh, rental units, a home and a condo. Uh, so I can imagine what the impact of five barking dogs next door would be to any residents, especially when it's every block, I mean every house on the block. Um, so the property values, the quality of life, your planning, you can just about forget. It'll affect businesses because dogs will be escaping. As a matter of fact, I was almost attacked on Avenue 53 by two large pit bulls that escaped from the glass company up on Figueroa. So um, if that had been five dogs, I wouldn't be here today. So this is really serious. It's serious for the safety of children, for the value of property, for quiet, as I say, property of life. Um, the new general manager, as you know, has no law enforcement uh, experience nor interest. Uh, as you may recall in her interview, she said that the LAPD would be doing the law enforcement and you asked her about the abandoned animals, which is a big issue, and rather than citing the law, which is against the law to abandon animals, she said that small animal rescue team would come in. I'm not doing this, I'm not saying this to criticize her, but merely that it's not part of her perspective. She has only worked in a humane organization and adoptions cannot be the only goal. We need to enforce the laws because our animal problems are escalating because we are not protecting the animals in the right way and protecting the people. Okay. Well, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Yeah. This is an item that's not on the agenda, so I appreciate uh, your insight, and uh, we'll follow up with this. Yeah, I have a long, I have a long uh, history in real estate also, so I, I know what happened, how, well, how little it takes to destroy a neighborhood. And, you know, any, I just did this briefly, I'm not over time. If, if any property owner makes a complaint to the department, either to zoning, planning, or animal services, or to you, in regard to an animal issue in their, in their community that directly affects them, they have to disclose that in any attempt to sell the property. So if they're allowed to have five pit bulls on each side, and that's legal, just let them try to sell their property. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, anybody else for public comment? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.